Hi everyone, Rick here again with Rick's 135 scale models. I'm going to be taking this Border Models Leopard 2A6 135 scale Bundeswehr in a desert pattern Leopard and weathering it, showing a little bit of wear and tear, nothing major, and how I go about doing that. So the products I'll be using will be these enamel paints, the Tamiya acrylic and the Tamiya clear flat along with the chalks. I'll be using some cotton swabs, paint brushes, and other little techniques I'm going to demonstrate. So let's get started. First thing will be the paint chipping. I'm using a wood dowel with a point on it to scratch the paint. The vehicle was primed in red so the red will come out. Then I'm going to use a needle and make a little finer scratches to bring out the red and create the scratch look on the siding. Next I'm going to make my enamel wash. I'm using three different colors for this model. A uh, light gray, a medium gray, and a dark gray. The dark gray has a hint of green in it which will help bring out the undercoat of the vehicle which was primed in a green by the manufacturer when they originally made the tanks. I'm going to put about a 4 to 1 ratio here so I'll have one part paint and it's an enamel paint, not thinned or anything, and then I'll use enamel thinner about four parts enamel thinner to lighten it down and make it a wash. The key here is to make sure you mix it really good and that it uh, is nice and thin so that it doesn't build up or look too thick. Next I'll start using the wash. What I'm going to be doing is using the wash to highlight the different detail point to take the wash, put a little bit on the paintbrush and dab it on the spot and it will naturally spread out hitting all the creases and the low points. This will help highlight all the details of the model. I'm going to work my way around the vehicle making sure I get all these points highlighted. Later on it will blend in and look really nice.
After I've completed the wash component of this paint process, the next thing I'm going to be using is the thinner that's totally clean and clear and hasn't been contaminated in any way and blend it all together. What you do is you take in, take a wider brush, dab it in the thinner, make sure it's semi-wet but not too wet, then you work your way around blending it out so that you don't have any spots that look like it's just a paint drop sitting there. This is kind of a process of trial and error and as you perfect your personal skill, you'll get the effect you're looking for. It's just a matter of taking your time and getting it to where exactly you want it. next stage in this will be what I call the enamel blending. What you're going to do here is take the enamel paint that's unthinned and put little daubs here and there and lines and then after you've got all the spots you're going to let them dry for just a little bit so that they thicken up and then you're going to take your thinner again, the enamel thinner, and once again take your white brush, get it damp and then you're going to start blending this around the effect you're looking for here is your streaking or weathered stain areas from uh, road wear and things like that. Um, if you're using like a rust, you're going to pull it downward uh, for the water streaks. You want you know different spots and different locations to get that hazy line. This is another one of those processes where you're just going to take your time and through trial and error kind of figure out the right thing. The biggest thing to remember here is start subtle don't do a lot, um, build it up and uh, that way you can find that exact effect you're looking for versus putting too much paint on then you're trying to recover from overdoing it. For the larger spots on the tops of vehicles that you're not going to have the rain and debris rolling off as easy, make sure you do a really nice blend. Don't get it too heavy and don't create too many streaks. And if you do create streaks, make sure they look natural versus obviously painted on. Another thing to watch for is when you're doing the lighter lines such as like a rain uh, streak, if you look at the real vehicle on the roadway you'll notice that it kind of collects more underneath hinges and different things that will affect the water flow and the debris coming down from one reason or another from dust and that. So try and look on your model and look for things that would be like that and copy those. It'll make it look a lot more realistic last uh, point that I would make would be remember uh, your color combinations a dark light etc you know if you're putting it on a dark part of the vehicle the light's going to show up more if you're putting light on light it's probably going to be visible uh, generally speaking I always start with dark colors and then work my way out to the lighter colors uh, if you do the dark first and then you put the light on you can help dull it down a little bit the next stage I'll be doing is the acrylic dusting. Now what I do here is I'll use my acrylic paint uh, watered down uh, thinned as you would normally do it and I'm going to hold the airbrush about one foot to 18 inches out from the vehicle and at full blast quickly spray building up areas to create the look of dust. The biggest thing here is look at how a vehicle travels down the road and how a lot of times it will collect around the wind wheel wells um, areas that it naturally flows up and kind of recreate that effect um, so when you're doing the dust. So next I'll be doing my chalk effect. What I do is uh, I generally take the chalk, take an X-Acto knife type straight blade and I'll 
scrape off it into a cup and if I'm combining different colors I'll do that especially with rust I'll do a dark and a light and then I'll use a real fine tip cotton swab and hit the areas I want uh, especially with the rust make sure you're careful because it spreads out stains really easy and you, you don't want to overdo it and mess up your effect um, but I do a lot of blending you use your fingertips or something like a white cotton to work on that. One of the things that's nice about the, the chalk is let's say you put a little bit too much of like a rush. Well, you can use a lighter chalk to kind of dull it down a little bit. Um, also, when you're doing the dust, it's nice when you have the acrylic and then you hit finalize it with the dust uh, from the chalk. It really does blend nicely. This is another one of those processes. Take your time, work your way darker and darker. Don't put too much on. Um, kind of think of what you're trying to create and simulate that effect. So the last part of this process is going to be sealing it all. What I use is the acrylic clear flats paint and then I'll use a pretty liberal coat of it to cover the entire vehicle. This will seal the chalk in and protect everything nicely and then any areas that may have been highlighted or look inappropriate will be covered up. Okay so here's the completed model. I have finished putting on the periscopes, the headlights and taillights and painting them the way they would be painted. You kind of get an idea here of the dusty look. This kit's ready to be put on a diorama, or if you wanted to just set it on your shelf, either way it'd look nice. It looks like it's been down a dusty road, moving around, uh, and being used and utilized. Kind of get an idea of the effects down on the bogey wheels. I'd already in a prior video done the tracks. And you can see the uh, dust that settles on the vehicle itself. A little bit of the weathering effect. Um, because it's in the desert, you're not going to have a lot of the rain streaking type of things, but you still have dust and a little bit of moisture that does occur. A little bit of damage down on the side, lower areas down in here. And then uh, just the overall dusty on the rear as it goes down the road. And then here's the uh, tail lights and turn signals put in the back. I like the overall effect, I'm real happy with it. Um, I had to use uh, pictures from of martyrs and other German vehicles to get an idea of how this might look if it was actually deployed in Afghanistan. Some of the effects you can kind of see are, uh, you know, just the dust really on the wheels and axles, etc. How it settles in. Uh, the weathering really brings out the hatches. You see the black there. Some of the vents. Also dulls down a lot of the uh, decals so they look a little more realistic. Some of the uh, scratches and scuffs you'd get in these areas. Along with up on the deck some of the dust you'd get settled in there and a little bit more underneath versus on the top. And then you kind of get an idea of some of the damage just from going over to bring in that you get scuffing down there a little bit, nothing major. And then up on the roof, just the dust that settles in up there. Like I said, more of this is in the back area where you get more dust in that settling. The vehicle itself was painted with Vallejo paint in the standard German uh, sand beige, sand brawn, and 
inhaled olive or a light olive. After that, I did the clear acrylic sealer, put the decals on, and then did a flat. From there, the video picks up the building of the vehicle. It's a border model, came out really nice. I'm very happy with it, and probably gonna end up doing a little diorama to really show it off. So, any questions, comments, please feel free to reach out to me. Please subscribe, and happy modeling. Take care.